Welcome back to an Act Analysis and Tips for Animators. And today I'm going to cover episode five. That's the second to last episode of Mayor of Easttown. And I'm going to cover things like body language, body anticipation, outside influence, weight assignment, and a lot more in a packed Act Analysis and Tips for Animators. I mean, it's fairly packed. I'm just like, I'm looking at seven, seven clips. But anyway, uh, in case you're new to this channel, hi, my name is JD and I do act analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips. I do rig reviews, product reviews. I do lectures. I do feedback, a bunch of posted stuff. This is the usual pitch at the beginning. Browse around my channel. If you like it, subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads. If you don't like it, don't subscribe. Maybe I'll convince you at the end of this clip, but that's that short and sweet, the pitch. Let's get to the sequences. Sequence number one is this one in terms of the reaction that he has around here, but mainly the one that he gets right there. So for context, you can see here establishing he is talking to him and he's going to show him a bunch of stuff. Why am I showing this? Because you could concentrate on something like this in your shot. We don't know this. Again, it's just an exercise, like a lip sync exercise, and you can hear the audio from a person that's off screen. What I like about that moment there is this, because this is the moment where this character is putting down this. So he puts this down and he reacts to that. And I like this because this opens up the shot. A lot of times when students animate, they have a character just like here, and that's it. It's basically the character lives in this frame and it's all very presentational in terms of silhouette and whatever you want to do, but there's nothing that lives outside. So you rarely have something where a character acknowledges that either someone is talking who's taller or a sound or someone does something that catches attention. Maybe someone is out in the streets and there's an airplane flying by, all kinds of stuff. But the character is aware, Spidey Sense style, of what is going on off screen. And I like this, I like that it opens up the world and let's pretend there is a lip sync, quote unquote, but you're not animating this, as I've mentioned many times. You can just animate the character listening and reacting to this. But then I would include something like this. Just make sure that the character is aware of the surroundings and this could be things that move around, sound that happens, whatever it is, but there is a world outside of this frame. And I think it's gonna add an extra layer to your shots. This one is in terms of a classic weight assignment. This is the setup, they have to carry this mattress and I've carried mattresses and they're heavy and it's a pain, especially when they fold. <laughs> that has nothing to do with this, but if when they fold and it's not a rigid mattress, it's such a pain to carry. Anyway, they do all this and they get to this point. And this is kind of fun because when you listen to this. You okay, Pa? Yeah, it's fine. Keep going. You're breathing like you just ran a marathon. Here, set it down, set it down. There's a bunch of audio and it's in a way an extension of the weight assignment. So it's cool because you don't see the other character for quite some time. So you don't have to animate a second character as a pain to do. So you only have this and it's an interesting shape. It's not your classic, you know, weight lift box thing that bited but way back in the day. It's more interesting in terms of the shape. You have a better asymmetry. It's interesting line of action. It gives you this nice shape overall as well. It has to go upstairs over an edge here. All those extra things to me make it much more interesting in terms of body mechanics and posing. On top of that, you have a character grunting. Now there could be something where this character is grunting and shouting of like, you know, pull, pull, whatever it is. And then your animation would be reacting to this or the opposite where you do a weight assignment and you actually have lip sync on top of that. I think these are all extra variations of a somewhat regular assignment, which could be really cool. On top of that, once they are done, they put this down and you can see that push at the end, it's a nice little exit there. And then this happens. So now you have a classic dialogue scene and you can see this, he's just exhausted. He wipes his mouth, Blech. maybe some sniffling, big exhale. And then they start doing whatever they're doing in the scene here without spoiling anything. But the cool thing about that is that it's almost like this could be your setup. So imagine your shot could be just this. You can see it maybe even two character, right? So you have a push, you have a pull, two different types of weight, which is really cool. And you end with this, then cut to that. And then you can also basically cut to something like this, where maybe they're closer. You have to worry too much about the body mechanics because you've established that already in this shot. And now you can do your audio with the overriding thing of exhaustion. They just carry this, there's a lot of breathing. I mean, obviously you would have to find audio that's appropriate for that, but all the breathing, the exhale, and just the labored speaking part, could be, again, an extra layer to animation instead of just a character standing and delivering a line without any type of influence. The influence in this term, and in this case, is the exhaustion. I think this could be, again, like a cool two-parter. And this could be even for your demo reel. I mean, this would be a cool opening. Right off the bat, you're showing weight and body mechanics. And then straight after that, you could go into a more close-up-ish or mid-close-up 
of lip sync dialogue. So bam, you cover two things right off the bat at the beginning of your reel. This one I wanted to show just because of the kind of emotional dissipation and it's just kind of this section through there. So Mare wanted to say something, I don't want to spoil too much, we're getting towards the end of the show here, but she said something, it didn't, it didn't quite work. She's exhausted, mentally and emotionally exhausted. The mom comes in and asks, how did it go? And then she breaks down. It's like, it was just, it was horrible. It's a really tough scene to watch as well. And she is old and I brought her up before in, in these analysis clips. And she wants to get to her daughter and support her, but she can't because she's not the fastest anymore. And I like this, A, it's kind of like it's dark. So she has to kind of check where am I going? And at the same time, it's also, I want to get to you faster than I can because I want to hug you. I want to support you. I want to give you that emotional support. And you can see that right there. And I like that as that moment of, it's not just, again, breaking down in pure animation sense of mechanics of going upstairs that's complicated to animate. And these are, you know, in terms of the character with age. So you have the arm out for balance. You have the arm out for visibility because it's dark. And the emotional thing of, I want to get to you as fast as I can. I'm really trying because I want to support you. And I like that as the anticipation to this and then they reunite and then they hug and it's an emotional scene so to me these are all extra real cool layers and also in terms of a complicated shot again you're going from a flat surface to a change of elevation with stairs and then into that speaking of body language there is this so she does not work for the police anymore spoilers and you can see in the walk it's fairly relaxed he gives her an update on what's going on and not that she doesn't care, but it's like, you know, she tells him, I don't really work for you anymore. And it's this scene here, you can see it's a very, you know, slow walk. There's nothing huge going on. She looks down, fairly relaxed in their sidesteps. And like, come on, I don't work for you anymore. And then he says, well, I fired the guy or let the guy go that replaced you. And now look at her reaction. A little movement, looks, look at that. A little things of nodding. And I like that as the, it's almost like the anticipatory emotional or just the body language before she says thank you look at that the exhale of relief and thank you for sticking with me and i like that this is starting through all this section here so for you as a student if you're watching this again your characters need to be aware of their surroundings including how they process information so what this character is telling her she's hearing for the first time, even though they might have rehearsed, and this is, you know, actors, they know their script, they still have to act as if it's the first time. So her hearing this gets her excited. She gets her job back and she wants to finish the job. And before she says it, the body language is clear. As we always say here, you can lie through the face, but the body is gonna tell you the truth. So I like that little giddy, anticipatory, excited <sighs> before she does this. So this is something for you in terms of, Anticipation could be through the body before the lip sync continues. And again, make sure that when you have two characters or more listening to each other, that they really do listen, that the character here is hearing things for the first time and then reacting appropriately. So it doesn't feel rehearsed and you go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, in terms of the actors waiting for their moment and then delivering the line. So in your animation, this has to be as truthful as possible. Going back to the mom, because I love her, she's such a great actress. Again, this is the difference of age. So a lot of times I recommend that the character sits down. As a sit down assignment is a good, good assignment for body mechanics in general, but you can also do a standing up. And here you can see the difference when someone is old. If you have someone young, they might jump up, they might just get up, there's no balance problem. But here, she really has to go all the way over for proper balance. And now it's difficult. She's so hunched over, over potentially frail knees, that she has to put that hand down for additional support. And you can see spreading of the fingers, you got the, the pressure, there's lots of little things of the mechanics, but she has to use this to push herself up to get up. So even before I get to what I want to talk about, which is this section here, this is already interesting to see in terms of how does an older person stand up? So when you have an exercise in your class, which could be a sit down, a standing up or whatever it is, Think in terms of, well, what rig am I going to use and what are the advantages? Is it going to be a young person, a kid, or an older person? And so on. So moving forward to this here, I like this because, again, a young person might just walk downstairs in a twinned mirrored pose. But she is older, she needs support. So she has to reach over to hold on to this because there's only one, there are not two. So now this, the age and the support and all that forces her from an animation point of view, into asymmetry, right? It's a different pose where she goes this way 
The legs are somewhat pointed this way, now the body has a twist to it. So this hole going down with this, you can see this, all different poses, and it just forces the character into asymmetry, which is great, because it's usually a thing that I have to mention to students that once they're done with their first pass, to add asymmetry, offset, and all those things. And I think the combination of this set, the set design, the age, and the body support that she needs, gives you and forces you into asymmetry, which is great. That's why I'm such a fan of props and sets. This one is in terms of like simple moves from an action point of view. She tells the story, it's very emotional, it's very taxing on her. And when she's done, and it's kind of her collection of memories. So once she's done saying all this, you can see how she's going to look down and looks to the side. From an animation point of view, this is extremely simple. You just have a rotation down. Now you have a bit of a rotation here and here. Of course, there's some more complexity in there, which I would always recommend. So it's not just a one axis move, but you have a rotation down and then technically a rotation over and Y, depending on you know, whatever software you use. And that is from a, a technical point of view, very simple, but from a storytelling or even just kind of an emotional or emotional from a, a visual storytelling thing. So she tells this story at a certain angle and that's the, the reality that she's remembering and then she goes down to now something like an in-between of this is the sad memory got to get out of that memory let's get back to the real world and it's a simple thing again in terms of mechanics but think about that when you do have let's say a monologue or even if it's a dialogue and the character is talking to someone off screen or someone who's on screen and it's it's a memory so think about how your character will position the head the head tilt where they're looking what the eyes are doing and once that character is done talking about the memory and they go back into the quote unquote real world, what is that change going to be visually? Is that something that you can visualize, even if it's something very subtle or with two moves or whatever you have, but the headspace of the character is going to be different. They're going to be in two different mental headspaces when they remember something, if it's painful or happy memory, and then going back to talking to an actual person in real life. So always think about that, even if it's something small, even something like this, can still have an impact or at least a visual clue when you animate something so we understand something more about the character. This one is kind of a twist on what's in the box. Basically, what's in the box is that, and I did that as a, as a student you know, 20 years ago, where this was a box and the character looks into the box. We as an audience don't know what's in it, but the challenge is to then animate the reaction of the character. So it's kind of like also a gear change in a way, right? They're in a certain emotional space and they see something and then they're in a different emotional space. A classic thing would be a kid, it's Christmas, opens up the box, it's a gift and it goes from curious to happy, right? Whatever you want to do. Now, this is just a variation where someone is looking at a photograph and we don't know what it is, but we read into the face going, oh, this must be really important. It's a change of posture, right? You can see you got the lean forward and then the lean back and then talking to someone off screen, which I love because again, it opens up the world to this something else besides the character in this frame. And then it continues on where he does like a little extra thing of looking at the character going, come on, let's do this. And that's this character. The extra part that I like about this is that they are informing the police that, well, she has a photo that's really important. And this is what I like. It's that reaction of this must be really important. This could be a really a big change in the case. And they both have a different reaction. And I like that as a A part. And then this is the B part. Because this will be your classic assignment. You see something, you react. And this is cool because A, you can add more characters. There's more pantomiming and acting that you can do. And it's kind of the anticipation before the actual reveal. So they say something. It's a setup. Hey, we have a new photo. And then you can do, again, your acting. This could be verbal, nonverbal. And I like his, his uh, this thing here of, come on, come on. Like he really wants to know. So you got the lean forward, the gesture with the hand. I think this is an extra cool thing. And it doesn't have to be as long as this whole sequence is, right? Again, this could just be a quick moment of, and maybe even a quick off screen or just a hand with the photo and you hear, hey, I have something new. And then it's that, just a quick look of this. And then you can cut straight to something like this, where the hand comes into frame, gives him the photo, he picks it up and it looks at it. So you can kind of compress the shots. You don't have to animate 20, 30 seconds of a shot. But I like that as a A part, right? This is your A part. And then this is your, your B part right there. Actually, this is in the shot here. This is exactly what I just said. Hands it in, does this, and then that reaction to be the main assignment in a way. 
And this is why I love analyzing TV shows and movies, because you can look at this, and even though it's complex and it's difficult acting, and it might be difficult for students and for myself to get into that type of quality of acting, you can still break it down to specific moments where you go, oh, this is the assignment that I practiced, like the sitting down, standing up, the gear change. And now you have that foundation as an exercise. And then you have to think in terms of, well, how can I make this better and more complex and more interesting and more layered and just character driven? Then you watch this and you go, oh, this is the exercise, but now with that extra level. And this is just why I love doing this. It's like when you do the bouncing ball, you look at very complex mechanics, you can always kind of take, well, I'm gonna look at just the, the root or maybe just the torso or the head or all three. And you realize there is actually a bouncing ball in all of this. So all of those beginning exercises, the principles, and you might get tired of them as a student. Trust me, they're there for a reason. You gotta master them. You gotta really get into the nitty gritty of perfecting body mechanics and all those main assignments. And then based on that, then you can build on top of that and make your shots more complex however we want to do because a lot of times students kind of rush through those acting assignments they're kind of like ah, it's going to bouncing ball whatever pendulum ah, whatever walk cycles which is really hard ah, whatever i want to get to those these type of framed acting pieces that's fine and dandy but you can't skip the basic exercises because you see that all those basic exercises are visible within the more complex work. And speaking of complex work, if you have work that's maybe too complex right now and you need help from me to help you with your awesome shots to make them even more awesome, you know the pitch. I have workshops, we can work together. I can help you as much as, as you want me now, as much as I can help you. You can sign up at any time, link in the description with all the information, you know the drill. And if you're still watching and you haven't subscribed yet and you like it, maybe you can subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my uploads. That's the pitch at the end. And if you don't subscribe, that's fine. Maybe I'll see you next week, maybe, I don't know, hope you come back. And that is that. If you're still watching the whole thing, as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate your patience that you watch till the very end. And that's it for me. And I will see you in my next upload.